Welcome to another in the train simulation series for Run 8. This is the BNSF Bakersfield Local out of BNSF Bakersfield Yard. We take a look at the OC on the Run 8 Depot to see what's available. Note that no dispatchers are on duty, and so we'll take a look at the trains. First there are road trains. No, I don't think we'll do a road train. Let's do a local, see what locals are available. And here is the YBAK371, looks interesting, and it says Yard 8. Uh, so we're going to find it on track 8, we're going to crew it. Uh, so we click the button that puts us on that train and marks us down as the uh, crew for the train. The OC shows that our lead locomotive is the ATSF 5698, so we'll go look for that and go take a look at our train. Let's first take a look at where that is. So there's track 8 in Bakersfield Yard. You'll see it joins the main line there at the Valley Lead. We come out of the Mojave sub onto the Bakersfield sub there at uh, the bottom right. And you see we go into a siding at Una. And then there's some work with uh, BQD and GFL. And if we keep proceeding westbound, we'll get to the BHS, Baker Hughes. And there's also a little yard there where we can sort our train. We take a look at the dispatcher screen to see what's headed our way and it looks like there's not much on the line. There's a BNSF eastbound we're gonna see and then not a whole lot behind it. We've got no dispatcher on duty yet, so we're going to uh, see if we can't liven things up a little bit by adding some AI trains to the mix. Those are trains that are driven by computer drivers and uh, operate and follow signal indications, and they add a little spice to your enjoyment as you can see them run by, but also have to wait for them when uh, they have a signal, etc. We clear the signal out of Hammond and begin to clear more signals on down the line. When you first clear a signal, it goes yellow, meaning a train will pass it once and then it will drop to red. If you click on the signal twice, it goes green, meaning the signal is fleeted. Multiple trains can pass the signal and it will clear to green again. I've sped this up a little bit because it's kind of boring to watch me clearing all these signals. We hop in the locomotive and start to turn on some of the circuit breakers so we can start everything up. joined your channel. Looks like we have a dispatcher on duty. Wyatt is the dispatcher on duty for the Mojave and Needles subdivisions. And uh, we'll need to talk to Wyatt then in order to uh, get permission to depart, etc. We'll take the easy way and start the locomotives up using the external menu. You just click on the locomotive and then click the uh, start button. You can get in the locomotive and go through the full startup procedure if you prefer. I thought I would just cut to the chase and start them this way. There's even a faster way. You can click on only one locomotive and then click auto start all locomotives. Now we set up the multiple unit, distributed power, all of those kinds of things. Everything is ready to go. And let's take a look at our train. Walking out to the front, we're gonna save the train. And the reason we do that is so we can create a train report in the OC. We go to train, click on the AAA train report and save it. I always use the same name and that way it always saves over with the latest train. Now I can go to the OC, click load train report and I browse to that file, find the one with the XML on the end of it, and hit done, upload train, and voila, we now have a button that says view train report. And here's a nice report of the entire train, every car in it, the order of the cars and where they are each going. And we notice a problem. There's a bunch of BQD cars followed by some BHS before we get the more BQDs. So the train is not really blocked perfectly. We could wait until we get to a little yard that we're going to reach and then resort our train. But since we're not sure what the conditions are gonna be out on the road, I felt like it was better to go ahead and block my train. Blocking the train means to put the cars in order by destination and group all of the cars going to the same destination into uh, blocks.
As we wait to start our work, we notice a BNSF auto rack train running by on the main line eastbound. We'll be heading west out of Bakersfield Yard. This is the same train that we saw when he took a look at the dispatch panel just east of Una. Mic check one, two, since you were being kicked. Anybody hear me? Good mic check. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. What? All of us communicate using software called TeamSpeak. TeamSpeak isn't required, but it helps to talk to the other people who are also running at the same time on this server. That's one of the great things about the Run8 simulator. Multiple people can run at the same time and communicate with each other and have a dispatcher, all of that. And we speak with headsets or microphones using TeamSpeak. But if you don't have a microphone or you're not in a place where you'd like to speak, you can always use texting. Many people do that, and that's just fine. The text communication capability is built in to the simulator. We walk the path of our train to make sure that there are no turnouts or switches thrown against us. A switch thrown against you means that you could derail because the switch was thrown for a different path, not for the path your train is taking. We also want to make sure we don't accidentally run out on the main line. As you can see, there's traffic on the main line, so running out on the main line would cause a bit of an accident and is you know, definitely against railroad rules. And we can't enter the main line without a signal from the dispatcher. We come up to this switch to see how it is thrown, and it looks like, yes, the switch is thrown for the main line. Green meaning it's thrown for straight movement, which is onto the main. Notice the red dwarf signal showing me that we cannot proceed onto the main. Of course we can't. Not only has the dispatcher not given us a signal, but there's also a train on the line right now. We throw the switch twice just for extra safety to make sure it's in the correct position. I've turned on the car destination tags. You can do that with a keyboard command. I think it's F7, but you have to look it up. I will admit I use a rail driver, so I don't know the keyboard commands. I just push the button that says car tags. Anyway, the MEM means that those cars are going to Memphis, Tennessee. Having those on helps me when I'm blocking my train because then I know where each and every rail car in the train is going to. Copy that, uh, Barbell. We're gonna stop you at Amboy, over. Finally back on our train, we check the headlights, turning them off and then on again, make sure we have control, and we're going to board the locomotive and begin our switching procedure. Actually, we've got an engineer on the locomotive. I'm playing conductor right now. You can take both jobs, conductor and engineer, at the same time by jumping around in the game, which, of course, you couldn't do in real life. A train like this would typically have a three- or even four-man crew. A, an engineer, a conductor, and two switch men or switch people to throw the switches and to help uncouple the cars, etc. We take a step back. We want to make sure our train is moving and we want to read the car tags so we can determine where to cut our train as we begin to sort it into blocks. A real conductor would have a computer generated switch list in his or her hands instead of looking at car tags in the simulation. We now see that the cars at the head of the train are in fact destined for BQD. It says BAK3071 BQD. They do that to help you know what train the cars are going out on. Different cars in the yard might be going out on different trains and this helps the yard crew sort the cars properly based on which trains are going to take them out. Having these cars on the head of the train is a good thing. We don't need to change that necessarily, but our problem is we've then got trains, cars going to Baker Hughes right behind them, and that's going to make our switching out on the main line a little more difficult. Here we are still seeing some BQDs pulling out of the yard track eight where the train was sitting, waiting to start. We now stop our train. We apply the handbrakes to the BHS cars because we're going to leave them here for a while while we start building only BQD cars on another yard track.
close the angle cock so we can begin to uncouple the cars. The problem is we have to give a little shove. They call it giving it a pin because we had the coupler in tension, meaning we could not open uh, the knuckle, the pin wouldn't drop. We board the uh, last hopper car bound, destined for BQD, and when the engineer can, he takes that train ahead. A lot of walking is involved in being a brake man or a conductor, so it's nice to ride the cars when you can, and that's what they'll usually do uh, as long as the uh, train isn't moving uh, too quickly to safely get on and off. As we approach the switch that's going to allow us to sort our car, we get off of the train. But we're moving a little too fast now. It's going four miles an hour. That's not safe to get off. So we wait until it gets below three miles an hour and then we're getting off the train. We look at the uh, dispatcher screen to see if there's any trains coming up against us. Pushing our BQDs back where they'll be in the clear. We want to get them all together in one block, which is why they call it blocking the train. It's a block of cars all going to the same place. Quite a few cars, and even at 7.3 miles an hour, it takes a while to get past them all. Tom, what fruits of a TSCAD do you have so far? The open coupler button being yellow means that the coupler is under tension and I need to push back to let the pin drop so I can open the coupler, which I've just now done. As a conductor, I would usually tell the, uh, the engineer, shove back, give me a pin. Now I've boarded the locomotive. The engineer's gonna take me ahead so that I can pick up the next cut of cars on the next track over. The next cut of cars aren't going to BQD, so I'm going to set them to a different track so that we can get the BQD cars all together in one block.
the engineer sounds the horn once to indicate that the reverser is centered and the brakes are set, meaning it's safe to get in between the cars and connect the air hoses. The engineer looks out his window, makes sure that all is clear ahead, while the conductor on the ground watches the movement. Run 8 has a way that you can save positions that you're standing at, so you can switch between being the engineer or being the conductor, and it feels almost like a two-man crew. It's fun to run with two people, and I've done a video on that. I think it was the LOP53 video I did with a two-man crew. But this one I decided to just do myself and to show you you don't need a two-man crew to switch in a realistic and prototypical fashion. Still pulling a lot of Baker Hughes cars, BHS. Those cars are not going to be QD, so they are all in the cut that's going to be placed on yard track 10. We're pulling from yard track 8. We're placing our BQD cars on yard track 9 with BHS and some other cars on yard track 10. The engineer sounds the horn meaning it's safe to go in between the cars. We begin to set the handbrakes on those cars that are going to stay on this spur a little bit longer. And then we'll go in between and uh, pull the pin. And there we go. Riding this cut forward, then I can jump off at the next switch and line it for the train's next movement. Engineer, making sure that all is clear. I've gotten off the train now. Going to throw the switch so I can put these cars on track 10. Looks like my engineer stopped a little bit too soon. We'll tell him to take him ahead a half a car. He does. Throw that switch. Get back there and make sure the other switches are lined, and they're not. We don't want to put these Baker Hughes cars on the BQD block, so we're going to throw this switch. Make sure the next switch is lined for track 10. Good morning, Blake. Good morning. Sorry, I wasn't wide. I said good morning anyway. Good morning. Going pretty fast there at 14 miles an hour. We're going to need to slow those down. We tell the engineer uh, get ready Stuff to like cut in about 10 cars. Again, a real conductor on the ground would give the engineer instructions. 10 
now nine, etc. In modern railroads, you'll often see a conductor on the ground with a belt pack actually controlling the train from the ground, just like I'm doing now. So in a way, you could also be simulating what we called belt pack operations. That's good enough, that will do. We don't need to push this cut completely onto this yard track because we're going to be adding more cars to the cut. Then we'll push it clear. Moving forward, we hop on the locomotive while it's only moving about two tenths of a mile an hour. Still seven o'clock in the morning railroad time, so the railroad's a little quiet right now. We have the yard to ourselves pretty much, so that makes our switching a lot easier. That will do, we get off line the switch for our reverse move. Hop on board and engineer, take them on back. Looks like about six cars to the join. Also to the hook, they sometimes say. We ease the throttle back, running about two miles an hour, which is safe coupling speed. Gotta speed up a little bit, we're gonna run out of momentum before we make it. Looks like now three cars to the join. A little too much speed, let's slow her down. One car down to below two miles an hour, safe coupling speed. And that will do for a safety stop. We get off the locomotive and direct the engineer to take her back another three feet, and that will do for a good join. to partially open the angle cock so that the air doesn't rush in and possibly cause the PCS the trip, throwing the train into emergency. Then we fully open it. We release the handbrakes. And we're ready to start pulling on this train. We're only wanting the cars Come on. Took up the slack and with all those rail cars and notice the red on the bottom of that graph. That means the brakes are still applied. As they turn yellower towards the front of the train, notice the brakes are releasing. It takes longer for the air to make it to the rear of the train. We also can look at the airflow indicator in the cab our engineer will want to see that drop below 70 before he begins to pull on the train. You can see the cars rolling back now that the air is finally off. Come 
on now. Let's give it some throttle, forward direction. There we go, finally moving them in the right direction. It's a little bit of a downhill grade, or uphill as we're pulling. So the rail cars tend to want to roll into the yard, which is usually a good thing because it keeps them from accidentally rolling out on the main line. Often yards are built uh, with that in mind. They call it a bowl. We only want the three tank cars because as you can see, the trailing two bay hoppers are going to BQD. So they will go on our BQD block. Stopping them down when we can. Go ahead and set that handbrake. We'll set a few of them so that the train doesn't roll back into the yard. Getting in between, closing that angle cock. You gotta close the angle cock before we open the coupler or the air will rush out. And again, we'll have an emergency brake application. You don't want that. And I got just three tank cars, so we'll go ahead and walk up to the switch so that we can line it for the correct route. And we tell the engineer three cars to a stop. Two, one car to a stop. And that will do engineering when you can get them stopped. And I throw the switch or line the switch for the next move. Take them on back to a join. Looks like about three cars to the join, engineer. Talking to my imaginary engineer here. We'll put these GFL cars right in front of the BHS cars because we're going to get to GFL before we get to BHS, Baker Hughes. That will make sure that our train is blocked for our switching when we do arrive and start switching. One car now. Make sure we've partially opened the angle cock. We see the air isn't flowing too fast, so we go ahead and fully open it. And now we're going to push this whole cut into the yard track to clear up. While that still fouls the next yard track, it frees up the entry into the track where our BQD cars are stored. Get a pin, open the coupler, hop on board, and tell the engineer to take them ahead.
will grab the rest of the BQD cars, put them with the other BQD cars. That way the BQDs will be at the head of our train and will be ready finally to begin to pull out of this yard. Get off the locomotive, line the switch for our movement, get back on because we don't want to walk that far. Heck, who wants to do that? And take them on back. Looks like we need notch one or notch two. The engineer's only in notch one because we're heading downhill. In fact, we've now skinned it back to notch zero. We're just really coasting and still doing a respectable five and a half miles an hour. We'll need to apply a little brake. Since we're light locomotives, we can use the independent brake. The independent brake only controls the brakes on the locomotives, whereas the train brake throws all of the brakes, or sets all of the brakes. Slowing down to 2.5 miles an hour, safe coupling speed. And looks like we have a good joint there. Hop off. Make sure the angle cock, we open it partially. We've got 43, 44 cubic feet per minute. That's way below the 70 cubic foot per minute limit, so we're good to open the valve all the way. We take the hand brakes off, and we should begin to pull forward once the brakes on the train release. We took up the slack. Looks like we're moving pretty well. This time the brakes released a little faster. We've got a shorter train, so it takes less time. The physics on this run eight are very realistic. If you have a really long train, the brakes will take a very long time to set up and release. Whereas on a somewhat shorter cut, it takes far less time. Engineer's view. Conductor on the ground, making sure we're only getting the BQD cars. And so far, that is what we have. Notice that the uh, text above the cars is a darker red. That means it's more heavily or fully loaded. The somewhat orangey or yellowish BQD cars are only partially loaded. Looks like we finally see the last of the BQD cars. And there's some PLS empties behind there. They're gonna carry LPG, I believe. We start to apply the brakes. We're gonna make our cut right behind this last BQD car. Engineer, go ahead and stop them when you can. Throw on a handbrake. Getting in between. Gonna close that angle cock, and we don't have tension on the coupler. See, the open coupler is white, so we can immediately open it and go ahead and take that train ahead. Not till after I climb on board, though. Pulling away. Slowly but surely, at a half a mile an hour. We'll ride this cut out until we get past the switch into the next yard track where the rest of the BQD cars are waiting. 
We'll then join onto those cars and begin to pull the train. We have no more sorting to do in this yard. Take her back, about four cars to a stop. I see the green on the next switch after the closest switch. That tells me that that switch is set for normal, not diverging line. And we need to take the diverging path to get on the same track as the other hopper cars are on that are going to be QD. keeping the speed under control because we're not going to be going very far and I want to dismount at a safe speed. Still under three miles an hour, safe speed. Dismount, line the turnout, and then I'm going to run back to protect the join. I can see him moving now. Looks like we're about two cars to a join. Running at three miles an hour again. We could couple at three if we had to. Really better to keep it a little under three miles an hour if you can. But let's be honest, these are hopper cars. They're bulk lading. They're not super delicate. Don't want to break a knuckle or anything though either. And 10 feet. That'll do when you can get them stopped. A good join, it looks like. Taking up the slack. Gonna go in between. That's already open. Make sure that the angle cock on the last car is closed so we don't dump the air when we open this one up. We partially open it. We've got 73 cubic feet per minute. It's going down. Gets below. Looks like it's steady, so we'll open it all the way. And release the handbrakes. We now have a hold of all of the cars that are going to BQD. Two short blasts on the horn means begin forward movement. We take a close look at the airflow indicator, which shows the airflow in cubic feet per minute. Right now we've got about 70 cubic feet per minute, meaning the brakes are not yet fully charged, so they probably can't be released. We'll wait for that airflow to go down. Now it's heading down below 60. We bring up the throttle a little bit. We're gonna start to make this grade crossing. Man, we blow for the crossing.
We have a little dilemma here. We note that the switch is aligned for the diverging movement, but that lead isn't long enough to take our entire train. So we're going to have to venture out on the main line to connect up the rest of our train. We throw the switch to allow us to enter the main, but we can't actually pass this sign that says begin CTC until we have dispatcher authority. Notice that the only switch we threw was a switch that is in the yard limits. We did not throw any switches on the main line. We absolutely can't do that without dispatcher authority. We put the radio in DTMF mode to tone up the dispatcher. That means send a sequence of tones that turns on the radio repeater tower and turns on a light on the dispatcher's console. Dispatcher. Dispatcher, this is uh, the ATSF 698, the Bakersfield switcher here at Bakersfield. Looking to depart south. I need a lead for a little while because I have to triple my train and then I'll be pulling out westbound. Over. I guess I'm on the west end of Bakersfield Yard, sorry. Copy that. Um, signal notification would have to run time for both signals at Gomez and then after that signal notification. Understood. Signal indication at the valley lead, and then uh, we're, I'm going to cross over at Gomez. Is that uh, understood? Over. That is understood. Over. Uh, thank you. The ATSF 5698 out. I begin to apply some throttle, looking for that signal to turn any color other than red. I told the dispatcher I needed to triple my train. What that means is I'll have to pull out once, back up to get most of my train, pull out a third time, and then back up to get the rest of the train. It will take three pulls before I can really leave the yard limits. I see a flashing yellow, which means approach medium, so I can proceed out of the yard limits. We're in the yard, the speed limit is 15 miles per hour. We throw up the track HUD that tells us that in case we weren't looking at our handy dandy map. And that's always a good little crutch to use. The real engineer would of course have a employee timetable that would show all of the speed limits, all the rules for going over turnouts, etc. ATSF 5698 approach medium out. I called out the signal aspect, but on this subdivision, that's not really necessary. Different subdivisions have different rules about calling out signals. Three short blasts mean begin reverse move. Mic test. Good radio chat. Thank you, sir. Welcome back. Yeah. Feels like I had stuff going on. You could barely hear that single long blast, meaning that the reverser was centered and the brakes were set. Now we make sure that the angle cock at the rear of the train is closed before we 
open up the angle cock to allow air to flow into the rest of the train. Opened up. Airflow is nominal, so we have a good join and we're ready to proceed forward. Quite a long line of empties going to PLS. Those are the last stop in our switching, so they should go on the back of the train. Plus, it's better to have empty cars at the rear. That helps prevent string lining, which means pulling the cars off the track when taking a curve. Dispatch UP 3521. Dispatch over. Dispatch UP 3521, I'm on the YBK-50 at Edison, I request permission to occupy Main 2 to do some local switching. Copy that, got five permission to enter Main 2 to the track between um, Kern Junction and Sand Cut on the number 2 track. Over. Permission to enter Main 2 between Kern Junction and Sand Cut on Main 2. UP 3521 We take a look at the dispatcher screen and see we are just barely beginning to enter the main line. And we've confirmed that the crossover is set for our westbound movement over to main one. We line the turnout to back onto the tank cars. That's the third move of our triple. These are the last cars going on our train. And once we've got these, we'll be ready to run west up the main and begin our work, finally leaving Bakersfield Yard. The green color of these tags on these BHS cars means that those cars are empty. We've got a pretty long train here, so accurately stopping is much more difficult. We've got a lot of cars and a lot of brakes, and they apply at different rates. So we're moving slowly enough so that we can make a safe join after having first come to what's called a safety stop. Just under three miles an hour. Looks like we're going to be OK. And bang, there it is for the join. That will do on the BAK 3071. Uh, too much of that. You have to do it um, the same way you do um, ED. You got to do it the same way. So you got to turn it on on the game, and then it'll give you dispatcher permission. All right. We finally got our train fully together. The lead part of the train is still on the main line, so we're already past the CTC signal. 
We're still in yard limits, so we need to continue to maintain our speed under 15 miles an hour, but here we are pulling west with the full train in tow. Last thing we're going to need to do is to close the switch after our departure. And there it is. For safety, the yard is no longer lined to enter the main line. Blow for this little crossing here. If, if, if you weren't working Penny Newman Grain, then the local I was referring to is not the one that's being processed. No, no, I know, but I said, if you got an idea, I'm all ears. Uh, I don't know how he's blocked you. No. I got a set of car out, though. I didn't know that much. ATSF 5698 to Bakersfield dispatch. Dispatch number. Yeah, ATSF 5698 like to report that all switches hand operated between CP North and RTH Bakersfield and CP Gomez have been restored, lined and locked to normal operating positions. Over. Copy that all switches between uh, Bakersfield and Gomez on the one and D track are lined and locked for main line movement. Um, stand by. All right, I'll switch the line lock for mainline movement. Uh, what's your first place of work today, Owen? Say again, please. Where is your first uh, industry you're working, over? That'd be uh, BQD and GFL just past Una, just north of Una. Over. All right, copy that. Um, all right, copy that. And will you be able to clear up in that uh, little storage track, over? when you get done with uh, BQD and um, GFL? Um, not sure. If you've got traffic coming the other way, I can uh, sit in Una and just take the part of my train that's uh, actually switching BQD and GFL, and that way I should be able to clear up better. Over. Okay, copy that. That'll work. Um, signal location into the signing at Una. Let me know when you cut your train, and then we'll give you. Uh, we'll go from there. Understood. Dispatch signal indication into the sighting at Una, uh, and then we'll cut our train and contact you for further instructions. Thank you. Five six nine eight out. Now that my train has been reconfigured, I save a new train report so I can look at how the train actually is configured after I reblocked it back in Bakersfield Yard. 
I open up the OC and load the new train report into the system by clicking the update button. I just upload the same file, but you'll notice the date on it is much newer. And click upload train. There is the new train report, and you'll notice that the BQD cars are all now together in a single block. BNSF dispatcher 26 answering over. BNSF 9058 west door. Go ahead, 9058 west door. Yeah, Sunman crossing, we're uh, ready to cut off, run around, and then uh, take the train uh, east over. Alright, signal indication, over. Signal indication that uh, Sunman said we'll be crossing back over at Calvin, correct? Yes, you will be crossing right back over at uh, CB Cowboy. Roger. Back over at Cowboy.
I have the footage counters on so that I can make sure that the train fits entirely into the siding. Also, I'd like to clear that road crossing if possible. I checked the dispatcher display to make sure that I'm fully in the siding. This is actually a cheat. A real locomotive engineer wouldn't be able to do that. The beeping you heard was the sound of the counter counting down to zero. BNSF Dispatcher T6 answering over. Stand by. All right, go ahead, over. Yeah, BNSF uh, 958, leader, new leader number is at NS 1135E. Can I have the train staff uh, for you when you're ready? All right, copy that. Give me just a second, over. I'm ready for the train stats, over. And today's symbol is going to be the X, as an X-ray. Fresno, Quebec, Foxtrot, Romeo, Sierra, Bravo, Echo, Kilo, 029A. Our HPT is 3.9, total weight is 3477 on the tonnage, and the train line will be 7 to 1. All right, copy that. X Fres Belk Knot 29A, uh, 3.1 HPT. What is that tonnage again? Our tonnage is going to be 3477. Uh, the length is going to be 7104. Copy that. Got that updated. Uh, signal indication. I'll have to, um, and then you'll have a restricting at Cowan, and then I'm going to cross you right back over once you're ready to go. Well, call me when you're ready to go over. Roger, I'll call you ready to go. Uh, NS1135 East out. Well, that's the end of part one. We'll tie up here at Una. Please join us for part two, where we really begin our switching in earnest. <laughs>